Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Handicapper's Corner. I'm Mike Heads along with Drew Forster. We're going to go through the uh, Saturday races at Hastings, yeah. October the 6th races. We have, do have a long weekend, Drew. Uh, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Uh, all three days at 150, so it should be a lot of fun. Great yeah. weather again. We're just blessed with this weather. This uh, I know. It's October uh, 5th as we're filming this Friday. It's October 5th. It's still beautiful and sunny outside. It's, it should be good this weekend. Uh, they've kind of sacrificed a little bit the Saturday and Sunday cars. Yeah, seven, races. seven races. To make sure they get a big push for the holiday Monday uh, race, which is going to be a great day with the premiers, the ballerina, uh, older boys, older girls. Uh, grade three events. Championship uh, races. Yeah, grade three races. Russell Bays, all-time winningest rider in town. Uh, Local boy, born here in Vancouver. Yes. And, of course, Mario, uh, back in town to ride for Glenn Todd and Troy Taylor. Uh, the Kentucky Evelyn Deer Stancer and Commander. Commander. And Russell two Bays of the likely favorites. will be on uh, the Penny Class Horses. Included. And uh, Jabrika. Jabrika, another uh, uh, couple. The, they're pretty so solid. Those two, will, <laughs> Mario and Russell, will get a good look at each other, yeah. uh, I think, in the stretch in both of those Absolutely. races. Absolutely. So it should be a lot of fun. That's on the Monday. That's on uh, the Monday. Saturday's going to be a beautiful day. Uh, it's going to be day. great weather, and the hard knocking claimers will be in action in the first. Uh, tough races. I had some tough here. Tough yeah. times picking out the winners. Only so seven races, but uh, that's all right. On to the first race, uh, $5,000 claimers that have not won two races this year, going six and a half furlongs. Uh, the three-year-olds, uh, I like the five-horse Oscar award. I'm going to lean to this one. Mm -hmm. He just uh, missed to follow my orders last time after you know, getting pushed through some pretty tough fractions, I thought, on a track that wasn't all that fast. Uh, I know he has to deal with this bruise for you and notice Sal, a couple of horses that ran one-two last time for a little bit more money. Uh, but Oscar Awards got some class to him as well. He broke his maiden uh, for 10, and, and he hooked into some tough 15,000 claimers, just couldn't find the lead in those races by himself. But I think he'll find the lead by himself. So yeah. I'm going to take the five Oscar Award to defeat the one, this Bruce for you, who, who ran, you know, had a tough go last time down on the inside, but his win two back at this level was pretty solid. So i uh, got to respect him. Notice Sal was finished in behind him, and I'll put him in for third. But uh, I think Oscar Award, I'm going to try him to win. Nice pick. Good for Five, Susie. One, Hopefully That's for Susie. Our girl Susie Rudatsky, of yeah. course, uh, Tens Bar in uh, the George Royal Room. Uh, I went to your likely fair. I went to the one, uh, this Bruce, yep. for you. The, been running against much tougher. You know, Pacal, Vine for Glory, those, kind of, those horses. It's just tougher. Mm -hmm. Down to the drop, uh, fits nice into the five non-two category. Mel Snow having another strong year. I went with him on top. Uh, notice Sal, horse you mentioned on the William Vanaway barn. Right. Amadeo and William are, have had a really strong meet together. I'll put them in the second spot. And I'm not really sure. Uh, I ended up going with Ray's Reno in the third spot just because uh, I was puzzled to see uh, Reyes right. abandon this Bruce for you for Ray's Reno. Uh, maybe they know something we don't. Maybe that uh, race last time was an anomaly and he can get back on form. So I put him in third spot. I went one, three, and two in the opener. On to the second. Nice little uh, $7,500,000 nice uh, race for... open horses. They're nice. Open horses. A lot of nice this is a tough race. Machines. Yeah, it is. This is a good... I went with Queechee. I thought that uh, fourth, uh, just being a couple lengths behind, full power ahead, one zone accord, silly fella. Uh, those are pretty tough horses. Right. Any one of those three would be the favorite in here. He only uh, ended up getting beat a couple lengths that day. Drops down to 7500 I like Queechee for a very uh, sharp Greg Tracy. Uh, Amadeo Perez takes over for Fernando on that horse. Uh, the second spot I put uh, Hornblower out of the uh, Dino Condolino sparring horse that's been on a bit of a roll, win two in a row. Right. Uh, don't see any reason why he can't step up to this one. Uh, he beat Warren Tony R, a California invader in the last. He's going the right way. I like him. I got him in second. And the third spot, another Dino horse, uh, the three horse Iskar. Uh, took a big drop down last time to the $7,500 level. Uh, just got beat a length and a half behind the lasting piece in Arc Hill. I'll give him another shot at this uh, right. level uh, for seventy five hundred. I got him in for third. One, two, three for me. Yeah, I switched him around. I went three, two, yeah. one. I went to Ishkar on top. Uh, I think this horse, you know, he was, you know, I was kind of humming and hawing on the disqualification. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it affected anything. Uh, I hate seeing a horse lose a win when the horse yeah. was never going to lose. Yeah. But perhaps it cost Ishkar second. But. Uh, I don't know. It was no need for much checking, maybe, is what was. Yeah. It was kind of a, I don't know. But Soft anyway, Ishkar was closing, was running well. 
Uh, I think the stretch out tomorrow on the 16th will be perfect for Ishkar, and I, I, I think he's going to be dangerous. He was off a little bit too, so uh, second run off a bit of a brief layoff. I think I'm going to give Ishkar the top top nod in here. I put Ornblower also at a Dino Barn in for second. Uh, he's got some speed and likes to win races, but most of them are for, for five grand, but uh, I think he can uh, be dangerous near the pace. And I put the one Quichi uh, with Amadeo Perez. And we should note that Fernando Perez and Richard Hamill today are in Edmonton. Again, yeah, another riding. Saturday in Edmonton. So uh, Fernando Perez and Richard Hamill not riding, and Marlowe, I believe, has a one-day suspense. That's why you see uh, you know, qu quite a few riders are, mm. are on the missing list, but uh, both Fernando Perez and, uh, and uh, Richard Hamill are in Edmonton riding stakes races there. So uh, uh, put Queechee in further, but cer certainly a horse that could win. He's a horse. Mm -hmm. If he runs that 143 and 3, I don't know where that came from, but if he runs that kind of race, he's going to be off. Yeah, he'll, he'll be salty, but, yeah. But I went 3 2 and 1. On to the third race, uh, non 2 4 Granders. Uh, got some Colts and Geldings here going a mile on the 16th. I'm going to land on the five horse Fei Ying. Back-to-back uh, -back runner up efforts at this level. Uh, battled a bit on the pace last time and uh, just couldn't quite hold off Andrell, who was uh, on a two race winning streak now. Mm -hmm. Andrell. So uh, I'm going to put Fei Yang in the winner's circle. I'm going to try the, uh, the six, Friar Tuck, uh, for second. I think this horse has a good chance. Uh, second run off the claim and uh, just the horse that, you know, if there is a, a decent pace, uh, could, you know, get the top prize, but uh, I'm just a little worried there won't be a big pace and that may hurt him, and that's why I'm yeah. only going to give him second. Same for the eight, Country Cash. I'm not too sure what happened last time. This horse ran way below par. This horse is much better than that, and uh, but off, perhaps needed the race off six weeks. Maybe it needed a bit of a freshening, and uh, but just didn't run the, the same kind of races that he'd run prior. So, I, But I'm, gonna, I'm not going to give up on him. I picked yeah. him last time. I know he ran poorly. But uh, I know he, he might be able to rebound. But I do he'd like been, Faye. He's been off for a while. He might need the race. So, so I'm going to go five, six, and eight. Uh, those, I think, are your three players. The only other one, maybe the seven, Fat Cat Diplomat. Yeah. Might be a dis The distance change may help this horse. You may see a better performance. But I like, I like Faye Yang. I, uh, I have the same horses, but I put Friar right. Tuck on top. Uh, I thought the day that he ran for the four non two, the day he was claimed, he kind of got jammed in behind horses yeah. and didn't get a real good run out. That was on Derby Day. Uh, Rico Walcott rode him that day. Uh, comes back off the claim, obviously you have to jump him up, he was up for 7,500. Now he drops back down to the four and on two, I think where he fits he's pretty tidy in yeah. here. Uh, gets leading rider Amadeo Perez for uh, good friends of the show, Wayne Oliver and Don Adams, two uh, great friends yeah, of the Derby here. Are. So I put Friar Tuck on top, uh, Fei Ying as you mentioned, uh, Reyes and uh, Snow, uh, that horse. Two seconds at this level, obviously fits. I have him in second again. And Country Cash, as you mentioned, I'll give him a pass in the last one, too. Yeah, he needed it. Uh, there's something happening. It's yeah, the same as Fire Tuck. Fire Tuck running his uh, older horses gets in against three-year-olds, too. Yeah. That's a big... That's a big change, a big getting against straight three-year-olds yeah. at this time of year. That's a big yeah. advantage. It's tough to run against some older horses like Pat Squero, who was dropping, and yeah. a little brown guy who won that condition last night. It, it, that was a tough non-375 that, 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 that Fire Tuck yeah. was in. That's so, a lot different than these I, kind I of agree. Animals, give him so. another look. Yeah. So uh, six, five, and eight. For me, on to the fourth, a maiden 5,000 for two-year-olds. New condition here at Hastings. Uh, I've gone to a horse that I, I, I can't get away from. I keep picking this horse, and he keeps running, keeps disappointing me. Is is number three, Mark, out of the Dino Conolinio part. Just got beat a neck uh, to after court in that maiden 20, which made me pick him last time. Uh, he had been off a while then. Maybe uh, he needed the race. Now he comes back for maiden five. I'll, I'm going to give him another chance. I'm going to go with Mark. Uh, in the second spot, I put number six, Sacred Cause, with the Craig McPherson barn. Right. Just got beat a couple links uh, to Sun Soleil for Maiden 10, now in for Maiden 5. I'll give him the nod for second. And uh, the horse that uh, finished ahead of him last time, I'm going to think he turns the tables on, is uh, Pat Jarvis' charge without incident with Apprentice Marnie Williams' the charge. Gets an extremely light with 105. That's not uh, going to hurt uh, this Colts' chances. I went 3, 6, and 4 in a uh, pretty wide-open 2-year-old maiden 5. Yeah, I went to the lightweight. I went to the Marnie Williams runner yeah. here, uh, 105 pounds uh, without incident. Got pressured on the pace last time. Still hung in for second with Sun Soleil. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't a crazy pace, but still, this horse... I, I, I can't find any speed in here. This horse is going to get the lead to her himself and uh, should be dangerous pounds. with 105 yeah. pounds. Should forget to stop and uh, this is a great opportunity anyway for the four yeah. without incident. Uh, I put the eight horse Inca Roca in for second. Uh, this horse uh, drops from 20 down here for five. Uh, as we mentioned, Richard Hamill rode it last time, but of course he's in Alberta, so Frank Fuentes will pick up the mount. But uh, Blinker's on, uh, easier company. I think that could add up to a good performance for Inca Roca. Mm -hmm. Uh, had some troubles last time too. Uh, kind of was lugging it. You know, perhaps 
caused his own problems, yeah. but he's had a couple of troubled trips so far. Maybe the third time out, this horse will get it all together, and he's not facing an absolutely tough group. I put the six horse Sacred Cause in for third. He seems to like running there. He's had back to back thirds, not really making any impression on the the winner runner up horse, but it's just a horse that complete your triactor. So I went four, eight, and six, but I do like the speedy. Uh, number four without incident. On to the fifth race, got some uh, maiden three granders here. Phillies and mares going six and a half furlongs, uh, full gate load. Plan to go to the four, Buffalo Babe. Uh, pretty good run last time, running second to Mazel's Secret, who uh, was dropping from 10,000 down mm -hmm. for the three, so kind of ran into a toughie that day. But he, she was yeah. well clear of the third horse, so I'm going to try Buffalo Babe to win it. I'm going to put the six, finally Sarah in for second. Horse that uh, finished... Uh, had a wide trip, but uh, the last couple of runs has had wide trips. Certainly needs a little bit better luck. Uh, Antonio Reyes, a very capable rider, will try his hand on this one. And the five, Alusha, I don't mind her at all. She had a wide trip last time. Didn't get the best of goes at all. Uh, this horse was three and four wide throughout the entire race. Was right there at the head of the lane before getting tired late. Like, these kind of bottom-end horses, when they get negative trips it, mm -hmm. you know usually they're not right there at the head of the lane but this horse was which i i thought was very good and encouraging so i think she's worth following because she gets a better draw uh, she had the 11 hole last time which put her in a horrible predicament and uh, i think with the five hole she's going to be far more dangerous so i put lucia in the mix as well so i went four six and five uh i agree with buffalo bay big uh run last time yeah. under mario gutierrez just uh mazel secret as you mentioned was a horse dropping was just too much unlucky to run into it you know, Ex exactly like uh, a horse that you know normally wouldn't show up in that kind of race it did she won she runs second she's back doesn't face anybody like that in here yes. uh i think she wins uh i went with a, a little bit of a tricky one uh, the two horse majestic woman out of the robbie anderson barn robbie again having a strong meet yeah. uh teams up with apprentice alex marty who's been heating up lately so uh not bad, just got beaten about three lengths last time to Downhill Daisy, who uh, ran a big race to uh, win that one. So I put her in second. And in third spot, I put the, the horse you just mentioned, finally Sarah, uh, Jody Roshan, and Antonio Reyes together. Another one just got beat a few lengths uh, last time for the same in the same kind of race as Downhill Daisy and them. So uh, put her in for third. Four, two, and six for me in the maiden 3,000 mares. On to the sixth race, two-year-olds. Two Maiden special weight. This is a good race. Uh, maiden optional 40 it Great. is here at Hastings. Uh, I went to uh, the 8 Shotgun Ralph. Uh, horse just uh, been running stakes company his last few starts. Ran a big second to Alpine Lad in the sales stakes. Uh, came back in the Futurity. Got beat about seven lengths, but when you look at it, uh, Proud Victor won by four and a half. So didn't get beat that far for second. Now he's in against straight maidens. I like him on top. Uh, in second spot, I'm giving this horse another chance, this Bluegrass Man. This is a horse that I thought had a lot of potential earlier on. Yeah. Uh, Well-bred, uh, especially Bluegrass Cats, uh, great two-year-olds usually. Uh, out of uh, Frank Barrowby Barn, he's having a good meet. It wasn't really turning out the way he liked, so uh, he gives him some time off. He's been off since the beginning of July. Comes back, uh, recently worked in 48-2 uh, and two just uh, two days ago. I'm going to give him another shot. So I put Bluegrass uh, Man in second, Chad Hoverson, uh, very, uh, a good veteran rider on two-year-olds, yeah. takes over. And in third spot, I put uh, Peyton's Best, just ran second to uh, Serendipity Grove and uh, a maiden 20. Takes a jump up to maiden special weight, but a horse that seems to be going the right direction uh, for Harold Barbie. So I put him in third, eight, five, and four for me. Yeah, I agree with uh, your eight-horse shotgun, Ralph. Uh, this horse, uh, good fourth in the futurity behind Proud Victor. Yeah. Pretty nice cold step up in uh, Regal Legacy. Uh, I thought there was a... If that horse repeats that race, he, he a winner, must yeah. win this this dash today. Uh, Amadeo Perez takes over. In his prior run behind Alpine Lad was was, was good. Uh, he's that that come, was the first kind of race where he really started putting it together, and he made a big run that day. Right. So he's going the right way. He's come back to work well. Just a lot of the signs you like to see as a handicapper pointing to this horse. You yeah. know, the price is likely not going to be great, but... Uh, it might be a single in your... It uh, might be. Uh, <laughs> the one horse that I think may be a bit of a price, I'm going to put in the second spot, the six, Lord Hart. Carlo, uh, Peter Alvarado rides, goes, gets in blinkers. Uh, this horse ran some big races earlier this year. Yeah. Uh, I wanted one second. I want a duster and prohibiting. 
Uh, bridge jumper had no chance in the, in the newest Westminster. And then came back and ran a good third to 10.30 in Tracker, who two very nice for 10.30 is a very nice Philly. Yeah. Tracker is a very nice Colt. Yeah. Uh, that was a big third. And then, then he got lost to Ryder on October August 22nd, then came back 90 days later, which is yeah. tough always. Had the rail, pinned down on the inside. The rail was not the place to be that day. Give this horse another shot. Blinkers, uh, I know the works are slow. Well, the one work is all right in 101 and 2, but the 107... Whatever, it was just a nice, comfortable yeah. breeze. Probably Pedro was on it. He likes to work his horses yeah. uh, slow early and finish strong. So uh, Pedro was in the irons, and I'm surprised to see a 107. Uh, you'll notice next week when Proud Victor runs, the Futurity winner, he's got a bunch of 106s. Yeah. He's been breezing that horse for Greg Tracy. So, uh, and they run good, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. It's not always about yeah. time. Yeah. But Lord, Lord Hartlow might be your, your long shot play in here. And I put the five, Bluegrass Man, I agree with all, all the reasons you said. So horse got turned out. Pretty nice colt, uh, you know, paid quite a bit of money for him at the Barrett sale. Yeah. Uh, didn't pan out early this year, but uh, giving him a bit of a freshening. The works are good, connections are good. Frank Barabee can get a horse ready off a bit of a layoff, so uh, give this horse a shot as well. I went eight, six, and five. On to the seventh and final, yes, only the seven races. Nice, uh, a little easier on you. Gonna get you ready for a three day weekend, so we're gonna make things a little easier on the Saturday. We've got a field of nine uh, maidens, 5,000 going a mile on the 16th. I'm going to go to the one. I'm famous. Uh, a bit of a price in here. Marnie wins. I got a right, two yes, today. I got right. Marnie having a big afternoon. But uh, it's only had two runs this year. Started the season uh, at the end of August uh, for whatever reason. It took uh, a long time to get I'm famous back to the races. But uh, a no threat run at the 17 5 level against Game 7 in Monaghy. That race kind of come up top with quite a few yeah. big allowance droppers. Then he dropped in for 10,000. And I thought ran a pretty good fourth considering it was just a second race. Of the year. He was only beating a couple links to What a Sense of Humor, who undoubtedly be the heavy favorite in here. And uh, I just thought this horse ran well, considering he got nothing out of his first start, had a bit of a wide trip in that race. And uh, if you look at his race last year, his final race of, of, of 2011, he got beat a photo to Forever in Time on 145 and Chase. So the horse can go long, he can set the pace. And I just think I don't see a lot of speed in here. And I think maybe from down on the inside, the lightweight. I'm famous can go. That, that's my race, play. Yeah. That's that's the play. Because I mean, the obvious horse is the three. I, what a sense of humor. You'll be well rewarded for that one too. <laughs> what a sense of humor and he who laughs last. There's your laughing exactor yes, sense of yes. humor and he. But those are the next two uh, that I picked. I went one, three, and two. But uh, what a sense of humor. Good runner-up effort in his second run here at Hastings and and he who laughs last off a, a long layoff. Uh, it was well beaten, but I think he's a better distance horse. You look at his races in California; they were better going long. So uh, that's where I go. I went one, three, and two. I just worried about the pace scenario. I just think the one may get away. I have the laughing exactor. I have one a sense of humor on top. Uh, I've picked this horse every time he's ran, and uh, maybe that's why he's still maiden. Now <laughs> oh, he's, don't be uh, so hard on your. <laughs> now he cuts in price, uh, cuts his price in half yeah. for the third straight start. Uh, I think they should do the trick, though. Just getting beat a nose last time by the Philly Ravster. Uh, great stretch drive that day. His horse dug in, but just got nose. Yeah. Uh, another effort like that. He wins this. He who laughs last, as you mentioned, on the Barb Heads Barn. Another one that Tim McKenna had uh, at Golden Gate. So he hadn't run since May. Probably needed the race last time. He did get beat seven lengths, but I look for an improvement. Uh, it looks like he got a little tired stretch late. So too, Yeah, helps. yeah. So uh, he should be ready to go. And uh, in the third spot, I put Heath Stylin. Uh Pedro Alvarado uh, for Terry Clyde. Just got beat uh, a couple links last time uh, in that Revster. What a sense right. of humor race. So he takes a drop too. I think he fits in here. But what a sense of humor I really like. Uh, distorted humor, AP and D. You don't see too many of them running a Hastings for Maiden 5. Uh, you're going to need a sense of humor if you had a. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you <laughs> bought that beat. one at, at the sale. Uh, so that's it. That's uh, the uh, card for the Saturday. Uh, yeah, Saturday, seven races in the books. Uh, hopefully our analysis will help you. Up next on screen will be a quick look at our seven race selections. Uh, we'll start first. off with me. Back in race number one, I went to the five horse Oscar Award. I went five, one, and three. The second race, I went to the three Ishkar, three, two, and one. Third race, number five, Fei Ying over the six Friar Tuck and the eight Country Cash, five, six, eight for me in the third. In the fourth, I went to the four without incident. Hopefully Marnie Williams can get this one out on the chooch and uh, take the, take him gate to wire. I went four, eight, and six. In the fifth race, I went to the four, Buffalo Babe, four, six, and five. In the sixth race, number eight, Shotgun Ralph on the class drop out of the Futurity, eight, six, and five. And in the seventh race, the speedy, hopefully speedy, number one, I am famous. I went one, three, and two. And on to my picks. There we go in the first race. Lots of ones for me. The, the one daily double. I went to the one, this bruise for you, over the three and the two. In the second, I went to the one again, Queechee out of the Greg Tracy barn over the two and the three. 
In the third, I went to number six, Friar Tuck, for Don Adams and Wayne Oliver. Number six, Friar Tuck, over the five and the eight. In the fourth, I went to the three, Mark, over the six and the four. In the fifth, I went to the four, Buffalo Babe, over the two and the six. In the feature of the sixth, I went to, I agree with Mike, I went to the eight, Shotgun Ralph, over the five and the four. And in the nightcap, the seventh, I went to the three, What a Sense of Humor, over the two and the four. All right, well, that'll do it for our Saturday, October 6th edition of Handicapper's Corner. I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in. As a quick reminder, of course, we race Sunday, uh, October the 7th uh, with seven races again on yeah. tap. But then on the holiday Monday, we do have nine races, uh, yeah. two grade three stakes races, the grade three ballerina as well as the grade three BC premiers for the older horses going yeah. the tough distance of a mile and three eighths. So it should be a lot of fun on the holiday Monday, October the 8th. Yeah, yeah, great day. So uh, thanks everybody for tuning in. Again, if you don't make it out to Hastings Park, great Get place right to here. watch the races. Derby Bar and Grill, great food, great uh, entertainment, great place to watch the races, great atmosphere, great service. Great service. Just great. Just all around great. <laughs> all right, thanks for tuning in here to Handicapper's Corner, and we'll see you next time. Noise, it says the great grandfather was great. I told you, Paul Revere, now this is no bump steer. It's from a handicapper that's real sincere. I think it's Valentine's Day.